Welcome everyone to a new playlist which is about Kotlin flows. So in this playlist, we'll dive deep into flows, what they are, why we need them and how we use them. So let's first understand what a flow is. Basically, a flow at the end is just a coroutine. And if you don't know what a coroutine is, I really suggest you to watch my coroutines playlist first. And here is it, this one, the Kotlin coroutines playlist. I also have another playlist for building a movies app if you want to know how to build a movies app. But this one is kind of important for you first to watch to understand flows. So you first you need to watch this one about Kotlin coroutines. So a flow is just a coroutine and normally a coroutine can return one value, but the difference is that a flow can emit multiple values. So how is that? Because a flow is a reactive programming concept. And if you don't know what reactive programming is, it's just allowing you to handle a sequence of values emitted over time and then being notified about these values that are emitted in your view model or your UI or any other parts of your code. So picture a flow as a pipe where you have a stream of data and over time that pipe gives you a piece of data as needed. And of course you get notified with each data that you get or each data that is emitted by that flow. And these flows are built on coroutines enable developers to create a smooth non-blocking stream of data where each piece arrives when you actually need it. So whether you are managing UI updates, handling network response, or you just have a series of asynchronous tasks, then Kotlin flows will really help you with that. So that was some introduction about what a flow is, but let's actually understand it with an example as we have here. So this is our flow. This pipe, you can imagine it as a flow, and this is the start of our flow. So we start our flow or we go into our flow, and then we want to get, in this example, a data from an API or a database. So that, that's what we are trying to do here. That, of course, our view model needs that data. So the first thing is that we notify our view model that we are loading. That's the first thing we emit. So our view model now knows that we are loading, and so our view model can notify our UI to show a progress bar that we are loading. And then once we get the data, so we get the data, then we can, of course, make another emission to in the view model that we get the data. So the view model, again, can notify the UI telling it, hey, we get data. Now we can just show some different thing like a message to a user, now the data is arrived, has arrived. And then the third emission is filtering the data. So it's, a, again, we want to tell the view model that we are filtering the data. And so the view model notifies the UI. So we are filtering the data, removing some entries that we don't want and only keep certain ones. And then after filtering, we then return the data to the view model. So we return like a list of items that includes that data we want, and then the view model gets the data. And then right after that, we tell the view model we no longer load. So the view model now can notify our UI that it can now hide that progress bar because we already have the data and we no longer load. And then we return from the flow. So we stop the flow right here. So this is a flow. It's just a pipe where we can get a bunch of emissions when we need them. In the next video, we'll see an example of how this actually works and how you can write a Kotlin flow with code, of course. So see you in the next video and bye.